Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, today, I'm so excited to be sharing with you um, a little bit about my kindergarten through fifth grade lesson plans. I'm going to run through those, and then I want to spend time talking about prepping for concerts. Uh, how to do the pre-planning, a little bit of that. Um, some of the process of like in the, the weeks as you're teaching, like how do you teach a song? Um, because I feel like I didn't know any of that going into uh, <laughs> teaching. So I wanted to share more about that. So this is a great time if you have joined or as you're joining to like leave a question of like, hey, how, what do you think about this? How do you do this thing? What's uh, your favorite way to blah, blah, blah? How do you plan whatever because I love when uh, these Musical Mondays videos become more of like a conversation and less of like me sitting talking to my computer <laughs> because it's way more fun and interactive for both of us I think that way so sorry if you're listening to this later as a podcast or you're watching the recorded version of this but if you're here live um, please add, go to the comments and add questions of like here are my questions about concerts here's my question about blah, blah, blah. I'm going to try and hit that a little bit towards the end of um, the video today. So if you have questions along the way, please add those in and we'll try and get to those. Um, okay, so a couple quick housekeeping things before I even um, start talking about sharing my lesson, lesson ideas for the week. So um, if you want to hear any of, or if you want to get the links or resources or anything of the stuff that I talk about in these videos, I have a whole page on my blog devoted to like the links, the stuff that I'm sharing. So you don't have to, you know, send me a message or whatever. You can just find it on that links page. That's at makemomentsmatter.org under the video tab. There should be a drop down that says Musical Mondays 2021, or sorry, 20, yeah, 2021, 2022, uh, recap or you can just click the link if you're if you're watching this on youtube facebook instagram or listening on the podcast there should be a direct link in the um caption for the video um where you can uh go directly there and then another place you can get resources there's a facebook group that i set up a couple years ago called every moment matters music education community um, come join us ask questions share insights share resources it's a great place to connect with folks and um catch up get help, um, find community, come join us. We'd love to have you. Okay. Um, oh, and one more thing. So, uh, this Saturday, so the last few Saturdays I've had a really, really great time, um, sharing at different workshops around the country. I've been in Chicago, I've been in Milwaukee, I've been in St. Louis. Uh, I was virtually in Philadelphia. Um, and I was in North Carolina. I, so I've, I've had some fun going around and sharing with folks, um, in lots of different places. I, there's one more week where I'm doing an in-person workshop and then I have like a couple weeks off. <laughs> um, but my next in-person workshop is this Saturday um, with the Heart of America Orf chapter here in Kansas City. So if you're in the Kansas City metro area, we would love to have you with us this Saturday, um, October 9th. Um, the workshop itself is going to be in Belton, which is just south of the city. So anywhere in the city, come and join us. If you're in Missouri, come and join us. If you're in Kansas, you can cross state lines and come and join us. The Heart of America Orf chapter is sort of like the Kansas City area chapter. And so Kansas City is both Kansas and Missouri, and um, we'd love to have you. So if you want to learn more about that, you can either send me a message or visit hoaorf.org. Um, it's going to be a great time. This Saturday, October 9th, uh, 9 to 1. Anyway, okay, so my hopes again for folks who just jumped on. So my hopes for today, I'm going to go through my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week, and then I'm going to share some concert stuff because fourth grade and fifth grade are both um, right now they are doing concert prep, and so my lesson plans for them look really boring. And I think if my <laughs> like a principal or someone looked at them, they'd be like, oh, like it just has like a song name. It doesn't like really have anything else. Because at this point now, I'm like 11 years in, and I'm like, I know the process of what I want to do, and I just it just sort of happens. But I want to share more about like how that works, some of the pre-planning. So if you have questions, please leave those in the comments um, so that we can get to those um, by the end of the video. I'd love to come back and talk about that and, and chat, and it's more of a conversation um, between us. Okay, cool. So I see a couple Instagram comments already. I don't see any on Facebook. Maybe... You can't hear me on Facebook. I don't know. Maybe Facebook is down again. It was down earlier today. <laughs> or maybe y'all are just like, we don't have comments <laughs> yet. Anyway, that's fine. But uh, if I, I, I hope 
you can hear me. So anyway, um, it, we're going to get to that sort of towards the end of the video and share uh, some uh, ideas about concerts. But let's start with kindergarten. Just for my, my basic lessons for the week and um, just to, as a reminder, I see students twice a week for 30 minutes. Um, this last week we had parent-teacher conferences um, and we had um, sort of weird extended change days for that. So I am on day two of my week right now um, and I'm going to see these kids um, in this whole week rotation twice for 30 minutes. So the first lesson for kindergarten, they come in, we do our circle song. I've shared about that probably every week for the last seven weeks. Uh, but in case you want to know, it goes to the tune of Button You Must Wander. It goes, um, come and make a circle, circle, circle. Come and make a circle all around. Take hands together, everyone together. Once we've made a circle, then we'll all sit down. So the kid, they've gotten pretty good at coming in and seating themselves, which is great. Um, and figuring out how to do that. And then we're already in the circle shape as we come in. It's, it's now to the point where kindergarten and first and second, it, it makes me really happy because they just come right in, they do their thing. I can talk to their teacher at the door if I need to. I'm just strumming on my ukulele playing. Um, and it's, it's great to have them come in and, and be uh, responsible for what they do when they come in. It's great. Um, then we do a couple songs that we have already done. We just um, use that and um, sort of go ahead with it. So um, with Kinder, we've done Apple Tree already a couple times. So this is like our third time doing it. So it's like just a practice, but it's also, I just want to do it again because, um, because last week, like the whole kindergarten did like an apple unit. Like they did like a, like a one teacher made applesauce and one person talked about the life cycle of an apple or apple tree. And one did this other, you know, like it was like a one made like Johnny Appleseed hats. I don't know. I mean, like it was like they had rotations and stuff so this is cool that, like as one more time we're doing apple tree which is a song we love we did it last week so if you um or, or i shared about it last week and maybe the week before too so if you want to go back you can find that but apple tree is a really really common song i've never done it before this year but i know it's a really common song there are probably 85 blog posts out there about apple tree and different ways to do it um, and then we do, um, we've been doing the song, uh, let us chase the squirrel up the hickory, down the hickory, let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree. And, um, we did, I, I shared about this a couple weeks ago about how I started it with a puppet where I have a little bass and hound puppet and he chases this little squirrel finger puppet and they go up and down and he chases them around and talk to the squirrel, you know, doesn't like being chased, but the bass hound loves chasing. Anyway, it's, that's how I introduce it. And when I first introduced it in the first lesson, um, we do just hands on our knees, walking hands for, let us chase the squirrel up the hickory, down the hickory, let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree. And then the last word tree, I have them go like make their hands run on their knees the hickory tree and they love that they think that's hilarious and if i'm playing my ukulele dum, bum, 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 ba, da, dum, dum, da, 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 just sort of a nice sort of a steady pulse and then once you get to a tree it's and don't 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 assume that's me like playing the ukulele like super well and super fast that's not it's just me playing like two chords really quick back and forth i'm not like doing i'm not doing that i'm just like playing two chords really fast um, so that's what we do the first couple of weeks. And then once we get used to that, then like the second time we do it, or the second time I bring it back in that lesson, we'll do actual feet in our place, like either walking in place or running in place. Right. And then today is the day where it's like this fun culmination of excitingness because we come in, we do our circle song. And then when we do let us chase the squirrel, we sort of do a duck, duck goose version of the song where, um, like, you know, the kid is walking, let us chase the squirrel up the hickory down. And they're just walking around the circle. And on the word tree, they reach down and tap someone and then run. And it is like duck, duck, goose. And for kids, I always say like, it is like duck, duck, goose. And that like you're walking, 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 and then you tap someone and then you get a chase. That's, that's the same. But where it's different is that in duck, duck, goose, you can go duck, 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 duck goose and you can choose when you have the goose but this is not the same because the song chooses for you because what's the magic word let us chase the squirrel up the hickory down the hickory let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree tree is the word that you always tap on so that's like the magic word so you don't really get like you don't really get to choose when you tap someone but you 
the song does. And the other thing that I add when I'm teaching this is that like if you've already gone, then you need to do this when you're sitting there because otherwise the kid might tap you again. And you, if you've already run, if you've already chased, you can't go a second time today. Maybe next time, but not today. So you gotta you gotta do like a cross hand. I've done lots of different things. I've tried different things for like what do you do for the kid who's already gone, who's still in the circle. I did one year where like I had them put their hand on their head. That like sort of worked. Um, I've done a thing where they like either you're sitting crisscross if you haven't gone, or you sit with your legs straight out in front of you if you have gone. That sort of worked. I don't know. I'm trying this this year to see how it works. Is like hands cross. I don't know. We'll see if it works. I don't know. What what do you all do when you have like chase games like that like what do you do to let the chaser know that you've already gone I don't know what do you do okay and so then the second time in the week they come in um, they do come and make a circle we do let us chase the squirrel we play it a couple times through and then we do my favorite uh, vocal exploration book of all time and it's this book called Say Zoop by Hervé Toule and it's this really amazing book and probably many of you um, uh, oh, good. There are people on Facebook. I'm seeing comments. Good. Okay, sorry. I just was like, oh, didn't know if you were even hearing me. Cool. So um, this book is called Say Zoop, and um, probably many of you have seen everybody's other books, which is like, there's like Press Here or like Shake This Book. or so. I, There are a couple of the books sort of like this. But what I love about it is and I've shared about this on other years. It says, hi, are you really sure you want to play? And then it goes, great, put your other finger, finger on the other stop and say, oh, 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 why this? Oh, 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 oh. And usually I put the book under a document camera and I will press and do whatever and then the kids have to react. So then like, you know, we do big O versus little O. Oh, 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 you know, like, so we go back and forth and then there's patterns. It, the thing I love about this book, it is like the perfect teaching process because it, it scaffolds them the whole way through. First they just say O, oh, and then big O, little O, then pattern of O, and then small to big, and then big to small. And then it like tries all these different possibilities. And again, if I'm doing this on a document camera, I'm sitting there doing this and up on the screen, they're able to see it. Um, so they're able to follow along, even if, you know, like they're all scattered out throughout the room, they can still see because it's up on the big screen. Oh, this is one that I really love because they can't just go, oh, that's got to be, oh, 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 because they're all actually small O's, but it makes a bigger O. That's sort of fun. And then a really long one, which I think looks sort of like the intestines, but I never tell kids that. Okay, and then they're jumping off a diving board, and then it looks like a fish. Like, this is just perfect scaffolding because it tries all these different things. Oh, this is super fun because it's like snowing, it's cold. Oh, 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 that's a fun one. And then, oh, it's crying, oh no. And then you meet, ah, oh, and ah. So now you've gone like through a thousand different options of oh sounds, which is just a blue dot in lots of different variations. And now they add the red dot, which is an ah sound. So now kids have to differentiate with the two, between the two, so then they try even more uh, things like that, like the two are talking back and forth to one another. Um, <clears throat> they're talking back and forth like robots, so then instead of oh, 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 ah, 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 it's oh, 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 ah, ah, oh, ah. So again, it's fun scaffolding because the kids understand the concept and now we're just changing the sound a little bit. Um, laughing, O's and ahs. This, I mean, the book is just super, super cool for how it like scaffolds and goes through. There is a page I always skip and it's the one, I know, like I feel bad doing this because like I'm a music teacher, but it's the one that looks like it's on a staff. It's just really hard to explain to kindergartners and like to get them to actually I mean, like, I could spend the time and be like, oh, we're really going to work through this. But it's, there are so many options in this book that, like, they, by this point in the book, they're a little antsy because it takes a while to get through everything. And so I just don't have the mental energy to do this page, if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like at this point in the lesson, the pacing, it's really hard to, like, ooh, now we're going to do a deep dive on the page with a five-line stat. So I just don't even... And go there. And I know that's maybe me being a bad music teacher. I don't know. Anyway, but it's a very fun. So they go back and forth between the blue and the red. And then eventually they add in yellow, which is, so we've got O is red, 
or sorry, O is blue, A is red, yellow is wahoo. That's fun. And so they go through a couple more patterns of that. And then they um, say like, ooh, what other sounds could you make? And then it, it just is sort of a free for all from there on. But it's like a super, super fun, like vocal exploration. You can do up, down, you can loud, quiet. Um, the other thing that's really cool about it is um, this, I mean, like I said, the scaffolding is really good, but it's also just like getting them to associate like an image with a sound or an image with a reaction. And so I think that's really helpful, especially when we start then like trying to use like um, icons to do um, two sound versus one sound um, on a beat or, you know, things like that where we're trying to like lead them into notation by starting with icons. This is just like a fun, super fun way to do that and introduce the idea of that. If that makes sense. So anyway, this is like my favorite um, vocal exploration book of all time. It's totally worth, I think I looked on Amazon, I think it's worth $12.99. It's a board book. It's going to last you forever. Like super, super durable, great book. Worth getting. Okay. Moving on. Kindergarten. Ooh, and if you are just joining us, I'm going to be talking about concerts a little bit later in fourth grade and fifth grade, but also like at any point in the spectrum K through five. But um, I'm doing fourth and fifth grade now, so I'm going to talk about concerts. If you have questions about concerts or concert prep or how do you plan or whatever, please drop those questions in the comments so we can come back and get to them. Um, okay, I see on Facebook, Deb says, having the kids stand up and sit when they've had their turn works the best with chase games. True. That would be an easy visual, but Deb, question. Um, they, you said they could only pick a kid that's left standing. Do they get really antsy or do kids start... I, like, I feel like if you are sitting it's easy to like see the kid get up and run and then you can see them run around and do the whole thing do they like move around to try and like see the kid running like it's is that a thing that happens um and or do you have kids who like start to move because like if you're sitting if you're sitting you can't like get up and also run but like if you're standing do you how does that work does that work for you do you know what i'm asking deb okay and then um amber says cross the hands might work cool so like that's that's what i i'm trying this year we'll see Deb says, nope, works great. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well then I'm going to try it tomorrow with my kindergarten and I'm going to see how it works because I, I want something that works every time <laughs> and I don't know that this works every time, so I'm going to try it. Deb, I'm going to borrow your idea. I can't wait. I'll report back. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that idea. Okay, so first grade. Uh, we Do we come in? We do come and make a circle. Um, I already shared a couple weeks ago about doing Old King Glory. We just rehash that. We do like two or three different kings or queens um, to go through and try it. Um, and then, ooh, I love this thing. Um, so for years, I have lamented that the librarian always steals There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly. Always. They always steal it from me before I can teach it. And because I never want to teach it in kindergarten, I always wanted to show up in first grade. I don't know why. It's just like that's what I, where I want it to be in like my head. Um, and so anyway, I always am so angry that like they get to it first because they always do. And I, I'm sure that it's because like there are so many There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly books in the universe now that they're like, well, I've got to teach it because it's like half of our shelves, right? Like there's so many of those books. Anyway, so the librarian always teaches it or a preschool teacher or something. But I teach it again in first grade because I think that it's valuable because I think that like, I think like many of the songs that kids like just learn somewhere else that like the people who teach them teach them so quick or teach them the way they would imagine it works best. But I don't think that we really talk through the song. And so here's sort of the process I do. I say there once was this little old lady and she was just sitting, hanging out, um, this old lady hanging out, I don't know, in the kitchen or in the living room or maybe she's at a park. I don't know. I don't know where she was. But what I do know is that then, here comes, oh my gosh. And it was one, it was one of those flying things that flies around, but it's the kind that like lands on food or like lands on trash or whatever. And it's sort of black. It's not black and yellow. It's just black and it buzzes around. It's got wings. Do you know, do you know what the, and they're like, ooh, a fly. Yeah, and I always have to differentiate because when I do the buzzing sound, they're like, it's a bee. I'm like, it's not a bee. You try and swat at them. We've got a, a special swatter to do just that. A fly swatter, yeah. So here's this lady and she's just sitting. Here. Oh, and by the way, I, I, I looked around for, for this old lady who swallowed a fly. It's not a puppet. It's like a weird plushy thing. But I looked for it for years. And I finally found one on like a Facebook marketplace or eBay. I don't remember. 
but it's awesome, and here's why. Okay, so the, <laughs> the little fly is buzzing around, and I don't know what happened, but somehow the fly ended up in her mouth. I don't think that she wanted it to be there. I think it was like she was maybe yawning or something, and the fly just landed in her mouth. And instead of like what I would do, I'd be like, you know, try and spit it out, but instead of doing that, she went, and she swallowed it. <gasps> oh no, oh no, oh, oh no is right, because I swallowed the fly, oh no. Do you think I'll get sick? Do you think something will happen? What would happen? And so, okay, so the old lady has, I don't know, I don't know where that voice comes from. <laughs> it's just the voice I gave. So anyway, so she did, I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I don't know if he, she even meant to. Do you think that a, a swallowing a fly, like maybe it could make you sick, maybe, or make you feel gross. Do you think it could make you really sick? And the kids are like, mm. I'm like, I don't think it could make you really sick. But listen to the song. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. <laughs> I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. <gasps> Wait, did that really happen? I, I don't think that could really happen. I think eating, like swallowing a fly would like maybe make you sick or like make you, make you upset that you did it. But I don't think that you could get really sick. I don't think that could act. So I, do you think this song is like real or do you think that it's like made up? And they're like, it's made up. Yeah, it's probably made up because I don't think that you could, I mean, I don't know who would swallow a fly anyway, but like, I don't think that you could really get really sick from it. But like, you'd probably be upset. Anyway, instead of doing what I would, like if it were me, I would, first of all, I wouldn't have swallowed the fly. I would have spit out the fly. Um, or I would have like tried to cough it back up or something. Or I would have just like maybe left it and been like, you know what? I didn't want to swallow that, but like it happened. And so like, I'm just going to like hope that the fly doesn't bother me. Instead, the old lady went, aha, I know what I will do. Here's what I will do. I'm going to find somebody that would swallow a fly and then I will swallow that and then that will eat the fly and then fly problem gone. Okay, I think that you are missing something in your reasoning. I think you're forgetting something. Not forgetting anything. Here's what I found. Look, I found this thing because this eats flies. Do you see what it is? It's a spider because I am smart and I know that spiders eat flies. And so if I eat the spider, it will eat the fly. Here goes. No, 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 no. Don't eat that. Too late. Oh, no. Okay, it does sort of make sense, though, that, like, spiders do eat flies. But I don't think I want a spider inside of me. Do you want a spider inside of me? Actually, I, I have an unfortunate result to re tell you all about. Um... So I eat the spider and it's wiggling and jiggling and wiggling around in my tummy and that makes me feel gross. And guess what? It did not even eat the fly. <sighs> so sad. Yeah, listen to this. There was an old lady who swallowed a spider. It wriggled and wiggled and jiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. Okay, but really, I don't think that could actually happen. Like every time I do this, that verse, I always end with, but I don't know, I, I don't know, I think she could actually, I don't think that actually happened because you can't really get sick from a fly. And a spider, may, I mean, like, may, maybe eating a spider wouldn't be good for you, but, like, I don't think you would get that sick. I don't think it's, prob I mean, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, but I don't think you'd get sick. So anyway, she really shouldn't have eaten the spider because now she has a spider and a fly around her tummy, and that's probably not a good idea. So instead, well, here's what I would do, old lady. I would probably see if there's a way to, like, get it out, or maybe I'd call my doctor or something, or maybe I would, I know, I would eat a bird, and if I swallow the bird... I just have to remind myself not to say eat. I have to swallow. If I swallow the bird, it will swallow the spider, and then that will swallow this fly, and then problem solved. Okay, here goes. <gasps> no, don't eat the... Oh, no, 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 no. Too late. Oh, no. There was an old lady who swallowed a bird. How absurd to swallow a bird. Absurd means like it's crazy. It's not a great idea. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider. She swallowed... And so we go through again. It's like, what's she doing? I mean, it makes sense that she swallowed... Like, because birds do eat spiders, and spiders do eat flies. So, like, that makes sense, but, like... It doesn't make sense that she would eat a bird. Like, it's probably not a good idea. I know. I will. Go, I will swallow a cat. And if I swallow a cat, then the cat will swallow the bird. And the bird. And so we like we reason through why she'd do it. And I go, no, 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 no. So like she keeps eating right the different things, um, and then at some point I'm like, you know, I do you think like okay maybe you could swallow a fly, like I think you could do it. You could probably also swallow a spider maybe. Do you think you could swallow a whole bird, like a live whole bird? I don't think. I don't even think. 
I could do it, and I'm an adult. I, I'm not even a small bird. I don't even think I could. But do you think he could swallow a whole cat? No, I don't think that's even possible. So is this song serious or is it silly? I would definitely say it's silly because I can't imagine swallowing. So at, at every point, I'm like, you know, we talk about that. We talk about, well, what would you do instead? Probably call the doctor or like maybe the vet at this point. I don't know. I know what I will do. I would swallow a dog and a dog. And so she like reasons through and then she eats it, right, each one. And then this little version has a goat and a cow and then a horse. And so there was an old lady who swallowed a horse. You gotta, you gotta swallow the horse. I'm trying. I can't. I can't eat the whole thing. I'm too full. You're what? I'm too full. <coughs> I'm trying. I can't. I want more. And the kids are like, oh, she's too full. I don't do the version that goes. There was an old lady who swallowed a horse. She died, of course. I don't do that. I do. She's full, of course. And actually, that's why she can't eat the whole. Um, horse is because she's too full. Oh no, oh no, I'm not feeling good. Oh, uh, oh no, oh no, I'm feeling real good. <laughs> and then my, my old lady, she vomits up the thing, <laughs> which might be gross, but the kids think that it's hilarious. I have not had a class that's not thought this is like so ridiculous. But anyway, she, she throws up all the things and then we, <laughs> we count what they are. Um, and then um, if we have time, they, by the way, they, they, this is like, a huge joy in their life. If we have time, um, then I pull out the book and I have like 7,500 different book versions of it. The one that I pull out on day one is this one. Um, this one is uh, illustrations by Pam Adams and it's published by Child's Play Publishers. But it's this huge, huge one that I don't even have to make a big version of under the document camera because kids can see it because it's so big. Um, and this is fun too because it's a cutout version. So you can like... Um, once you get to the inside, you can see the thing that's cut out in inside the old lady. You can see the so it's like a fun little version to do. But I also have this one, which um, it won a Caldecott honor or got. A, I don't know if it won the Caldecott that year. It must have it has a little seal. Um, this is the one by Sims Tabak, which is another great one. And this is it's a little bit weirder looking, but fun. Um, and but I have like probably. I'm not joking, probably 20 different versions of Old Lady Who Swallowed or something. Um, and so I on, on Amazon, on my Amazon list, um, which I linked on the links page, I have probably 40 different, ver I mean a lot, a lot of different versions that I found. I don't own them all, but I found them and so I tried to like pull them all onto Amazon. I think Amazon's like a Pinterest for stuff where you can just like pull the, pull the links for stuff. And what I like about Amazon is that like you can then, like if you click on the link, like maybe Amazon doesn't actually have the book anymore, but it still has a listing for the book and the author's name and the publisher's name and the ISBN. So if you go to that Amazon page, you're like, I've never heard of, there was a bold lady who wanted a star or whatever, which I have that one. That one's fun. Um, if, if, you, um, if you go to that Amazon page, you can find all that stuff. You don't have to buy it from Amazon, but you can just go to my page and that I've, I've pulled them all together in one place. And if you see one that you don't, or if you don't see one that you know of, please let me know and I'll put it on there. But there's some really fun ones and there are variations like there was a dragon who swallowed a knight and stuff like that and um, different cool stuff. Anyway, so I always try and teach old lady who swallowed a fly in my class and then um, I put different versions out, sometimes for a sub, sometimes I use different versions like I use the Thanksgiving version around Thanksgiving um, because she swallowed some pie and that connects with oh my, no more pie. So they're like a, they're a bunch of, um, a bunch of cool versions, but I like doing it myself first in class and then putting other things in a sub tub or in lessons later so that we can do it throughout. And then also then afterwards, I always get kids who come in who are like, I found there was an old lady who swallowed a bell or whatever for Christmas, or I know one who swallowed a bat. I found it. It's at the book fair. And they like are so excited to tell me. And so I, lo I love doing this with kids. And that usually ends up our day because we do the puppet version and we read the book if we have time and then we're pretty much out of time. And the second lesson for a week, they come in, they do um, come and make a circle. They do the new version of head, shoulders, knees, and toes, which is head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three. And they've done that before, but it's just like a, a recap from like, it's been several weeks since we've done it, so we just do it again for fun. 
And then we do a song called The Pumpkin on the Vine, which is an old, old song. I did a blog post about it years ago, which I will put on the links page. I did not already, but I will. Um, and it goes, the pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine. I picked the one that weighed a ton. That's the one that's mine. So at the beginning of October, I added just basically the pumpkin songs and those I'll bring back and pull throughout the, the month until we get to Halloween and then they'll sort of phase out. But I mean, I use pumpkin songs even through Thanksgiving because they're, it's a vegetable for all of fall. Anyway, but this one's fun because I add a B section to it in later lessons. So like the B section, then we play with the form of the A and the B and we move things around. But in this lesson, we just learn the A section and we sing it and we when we play around with it, we add some silly little actions. Like we're walking around holding a huge pumpkin. What would that look like? What would it look like if we're walking around holding a little pumpkin? And we just walk and sing as we go. And that's that lesson. It will come back and we'll add a B section to that song. Um, for contrast so then we can talk about a b and we can talk about form but that's not going to happen in this lesson um, my second grade lesson they come in and they're doing um they learn a brand new song that i'm testing out i'm trying out um so i'm not going to share about it yet because i'm still figuring the stuff out for it um, but then we do we start in on something that i found last year last year when i was only able to like sit in just one spot and like not do any singing and not do any passing of stuff and you know i was really reliant on like well what can i bring in and so i found this cool series of videos from the sydney opera house called who's in the lift and i shared about these last year um but i it was one of the things that like i was really heavy on videos and examples and things online last year because we just couldn't sing and and we couldn't move and so this year when we're when we're able in my school district to able to bring some of those more active elements back this is one of the not as active things that I am keeping and I plan to keep for a long time. So the cool thing is it's put out by the Sydney Opera House and they have this huge, huge freight elevator in the Opera House. And each week for like nine weeks last year, they put out these videos where they would put somebody new in the elevator, in the lift. And then like kids, like first graders or second graders would go onto the lift and would interview these people and talk about the people's job. So this week we meet an opera singer and they like they like hear her sing opera and they talk about it and they like dance to her singing and they talk about her range it's a really cool video and then in other weeks there's like a piano tuner there's a stage manager there's a um about their ballet dancers there's a conductor there's a percussionist I want to say there's a cellist or something one week, but there are nine different videos. There's an actor and they get to meet every week. So in my lessons for the next like nine or 10 lessons, I'm going to put one of these videos at the beginning. It's like four minutes long, but the kids love them because with second grade, it's like a slightly younger kid interviewing them, but it's really, I feel like it's like built for second or third graders to watch. Um, maybe first graders, maybe, but I think second grade is like the sweet spot for these videos. I linked all the videos. There's like a playlist of them on, on the Sydney Opera House YouTube. I linked them on the links page. Go watch them all. Share them with your kids. They're adorable. They're fun. And then after we do that, we do um, my second graders finally meet um, the sassy half note in the note neighborhood. Um, and for the first time, they get to meet her and like see what she does and how she works. And we've been doing songs with half notes for a long time, but this is the first time we were like really talk about seeing it, identifying it, what does it do, how does it work. Um, and it is hilarious because the sassy half note is sassy and they love her because um, she goes ta and she snaps her fingers and they get to be all sassy with her. And it's anyway, it's a great time. <laughs> They have fun with her. Um, in the second lesson of the week, uh, we go back to the opera house again. Um, and this time, so instead of the opera singer, we'll do a contrasting thing, like maybe the lighting designer, maybe the percussionist. Um, they really latch onto the opera singer and the percussionist. So those are like two good ones to start with because then anything else that comes after that, they're like already invested because they love going, going to the opera house. Um, and then we do um, Little Miss Muffet Sat on Her Tuffet. We're we just start the poem first. We're eventually going to sing it on So Me. Um, but we just, we're just learning the story, learning all of that. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to that again later and add more things in, in further lessons. Um, and, but we'll just learn sort of the basics and get the basic of the story in. And then we do half note reading. Just reading half notes, reading combinations of half notes and quarter notes and eighth notes. And um, it's just like to sort of remember what they did in the last lesson and apply it more. To see, the, to see the half note without the note neighborhood, like clothes and costumes or whatever, just like just the note itself. And we talk about it, we try it, we play it, we read, we move things around. Good times. 
third grade. It's still a continuation of what we did in the last couple weeks. In the last couple weeks, we did this song, the Somi song, um, which it, again, is not one of my lessons, so I'm not going to share it. It's uh, something I took from a workshop, so I don't want to share that out because it's not mine to share. Um, but then what we do is we go to the simple staff, a two line. We've been doing a one line and a two line staff to map out just rhythms on a line and then to do like high low sounds um, on two lines. They have to identify both what the rhythm is. So is it like uh, eighth notes and a quarter notes? What is it? Is it ta di ta di ta di ta? They have to identify the rhythm first and they have to identify is it like high or low? Ta di ta di ta di ta or ta di ta di ta di ta or ta di ta di ta di ta they have to figure out where what the rhythm is and then where it goes on the line so in this lesson we pull out a three line staff and then we have i i do the pitches of um do so do and i don't tell them that but i just those are the pitches i use because i feel like they're spread out enough that like the kids can differentiate between them um and then they can try and put them on the line again it's like find the rhythm and then figure out which line it goes on and then um dictate all of that put it in the right place <clears throat> in the next lesson we learn um sansa chroma which is a song from ghana it's a folk song and a couple years ago <clears throat> i made these things called favorite folk song kits where like my idea for them was i would teach a folk song and then i would print out this kit and i put it out on a bulletin board so anytime kids walk by they'd be like "Ooh, sansa chroma i knew that one and then they could like learn extra information like um oh it's from Ghana or you know like here it's from the Akan tribe and here the Akan people and blah 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 and it tell, tells a little bit more about it and then I was like why am I just using that for a bulletin board why am I not also using that to teach doesn't make sense so uh, I would pull in that those uh, visuals and I use them in a PowerPoint format so now when I use it I do it for both things I use it when I teach and then I put it in the hallway if I can um, so I link that on the links page if you want to check that out and see sort of like what's included I always try to include like vocabulary, historical information, when it was first written down, um, what does the song mean, why do we, you know, like, what are some of the things about it, I try and include media, like, links to YouTube and stuff if I can find that, that's all linked to that one package, because, like, those are the things I want to have when I'm teaching the song, I want to have all that available to me, so I put that all in there at once. And then third grade, then we do um, half rest, which I think, I think is new-ish for my third graders. We should have maybe done it in second grade. I need to look at my pacing guide for my district, but um, I feel like we did do it in the previous year, but they weren't acting very confident about it. And earlier in the year when I was uh, putting up the visual or when they saw the visual from another grade. And so I just wanna make sure they've got it. So we're gonna go back and, and rehash some of that. Okay, let's talk about programs. So my fourth grade and my fifth grade, we're getting ready for concerts. Uh, both grades are. Um, if you have questions about concerts or programs ideas, please leave those in the comments and I'm going to try and get to all those now. So let me get a quick, um, a quick rundown of what exactly I'm doing with programs and then I'll try and hit some questions. So my school, um, we are allowed to have sort of concerts. Um, we are not doing after school concerts. What my school has done in the past, uh, before I got there, uh, was they would do a daytime performance, which is just sort of like a final dress rehearsal. Like um, on the week of concerts, m my students would like, I'd have the whole grade level and we'd practice every day that week, right? And many of you probably do that same thing. It's just that the day of the concert on that last practice day, it's less of like a practice and more like a performance for the school and more like a performance for um, parents. And so um, parents are allowed to come in and see that in the past are allowed to come in and see that and then um, we do like an evening performance that's how things have happened in the past well what a district has decided now is that instead of doing a daytime performance and an evening performance we are just doing the daytime performance and we will stream it on a closed streaming service um, or record it to share with parents just in a closed format so that we're not trying to like hustle 500 people into a gym so um and we're it, it allows then our my kids to spread out it allows us to have a limited audience in the gym if we want that at all and so um it makes it a little bit a little bit more covid friendly um and so that's that's sort of what we're doing and we're going to try it out and see how it works and, and hopefully it works great um but that's that's the plan for what we're going to do at my school this year okay so let's talk about um Let's talk about some of your questions. I'm just trying to like uh, bump back and forth between Instagram and, and Facebook to see some of your questions about concerts or concert prep or um, 
what you want to know. So let me just check Instagram here really quick because I know that there are people who popped in questions right away. Are you having a socially distanced concert? Yes. So, <laughs> like I just said. So yes, we are having, well, sort of. We're, um, we are having one grade level in person. We're doing it in that time period during the day. Parents are not invited, but they can stream it online or they can um, watch the recording. That is only on a closed channel. It is not open for search. It is only for our school, only if you have the link. And we do it through YouTube. I see Alicia's asking that. We do it through YouTube. Um, it's something the district has planned for and they've like set up accounts for us for each building. So like that's something that they expect for us. Um, I'll talk about copyright in just a second and how that sort of factors in. Unless I missed any questions, let me see. Okay, so um, my concerts, um, because if you're live streaming, how do you live stream and not violate copyright? Um, some musicals allow you to stream. Some are okay with that. If sometimes, if, if you check with companies right now, some of them are like, well, because of COVID, um, you can this year or whatever. Or yeah, always check with each company. Um, if you are buying, if you're doing something like like this, like a John Jacobson, like preset, like canned musical. Some people would call it a canned musical, but if it's like a, something where there's like a script and there are songs and it's done, that's something that you would want to check. If it's like a, a Hal Leonard or an Alfred's or something, you'd want to see what their, um, what their, the rights protections are. Um, if you're doing something where like you've just pulled everything together, then that depends on what songs you're using. So I do sort of a, a version of both of those things so um, depending on the grade level depending on the year depending on whatever it might be one or two different things so I have in the past done something where I'll pull out something like this like December around the world this is one of the things we're doing this year a version of this this year where I just pull it out and I like it because for older grades it does have like a professionally done track so there's like a backing track where kids like can it, it sounds like they're like I mean, not Broadway, but it's like more of a musical where it's like they can hear the track and they know they're like drums and stuff and like they like that, right? It sounds more professional. So for some grades, it's nice to have that. With other grades, we'll just do something where like I'm at the piano or we're doing instruments or whatever, um, where we sort of pull lots of things together. So it just depends on what you want to do. I want, by the time my kids are out of fifth grade, I want them to have done something that's more of like a like a mini musical, like a John Jacobson musical, a musical K-8 musical. I want them to have that experience. I think that's great and valid. I also want them to have an experience where like we just pull together the songs from our classroom. I want them to have an experience where they share folk dance with their parents. I want them to have an experience where um, they sort of help get to create some of it. So I, I, I try and do like a little bit of everything because I know if I do just like the one way for all grades every time, it'll get tiresome for them, but also like they don't get the full experience. Like I want them to have the opportunity of like saying the lines and doing the thing and wearing costumes if they want at least once. Um, so yeah, so I, I give a little bit of variety. So um, it, I think it depends on the grade. It depends on the time of year. My Usually my things that are in the fall are more of the canned musicals because it's a little bit quicker, easier for me to teach. Usually if I'm going to do like a program where like I like um, this one, uh, Rumble in the Jungle, or there's another version um, by the same author called Commotion in the Ocean. Um, there are these books where, you know, like for this one, it's like each page, it's like a different animal. Um, and so for something like this, you could find a song or two songs or three songs for each animal and just pull together your favorites um, and then like use the book as like your connective material to pull together lots of different songs. And maybe um, if you plan it well, like I did one on this by the same author, Giles Andre, um, that he did called um, Commotion in the Ocean. And for each page or a couple pages, there'd be an animal. And so through the year, we would learn a song that could then become the octopus song or a song that could be the whale song or whatever. And maybe it's about the ocean. Maybe it's about the whale. Maybe it has connective material to that. Maybe it just is whale-esque. I don't know. You know, like a movement thing that doesn't really have words could be the whale one or whatever. So we brought all that together and then used the book as connective material. And the cool thing about that is then like whatever's in your curriculum, if you can, if you're like, oh, we got to do so many law songs. Okay, well find a so many law song that's about a gorilla or whatever, and then that can be, you can pull things that you're gonna do in your class anyway and just put them into your concert. And I love doing that.
when possible. So like this is a great example for younger grades. For an older grade, um, I've done this before. I did this one year with fifth grade. What do you do with an idea? Where um, the whole book, and it's a beautiful book, it talks about like you take, uh, you take an idea and you nurture it. Maybe you aren't sure about the idea and you hide it away or you push it away for a while, but then you take it out and you nurture it and you love it and you bring it forth and it becomes this beautiful thing. And this book is just a, a cool, you know, it's just cool visuals, cool examples. Um, the book itself is really accessible for kids, makes this really sort of weird esoteric idea of like an idea growing. It helps kids to really understand like what that really means. And they, I, it's just this really, really cool book. Anyway, I use that book as another impetus for like a whole song or whole concert about discovery or trying new things. And you could pull in songs about like exploring or um, moving to a new place or trying something new, or it could also be the idea of discovery. So like um, exploration or invention, or you could do a song about like a song in a new language, like we're branching out, we're going to try something new ourselves, or, you know, there, there are so many ways that you can pull things in thematically, and finding a really good book that, like, inspires you is a great way to do that. So, right now, my fourth grade, we're doing sort of a pull-together concert, so, like, that idea of, like, pull a little bit of this, a little bit of that, because my fourth grade concert is on Veterans Day. It has been on Veterans Day for years and years and years, and so that's what the, ex the expectation is, that, like, it's going to match up with Veterans Day. They've done a Veterans Day, like, uh, program where they, like, bring, you know, they, they make all these tie-ins. So, what I'm trying to do is, like, we can't, like, invite in veterans or invite in people to our school, uh, but we can still have it on Veterans Day. We can still do patriotic music and all different forms of that. Um, one of the things I'm tying into that is that in Kansas City is this really cool thing called... Um, uh, well, hold on. Let me see if I can pull up a link. Um, the Veterans Community Project. Um, yeah, I'm trying to pull up their exact website. Uh, veteranscommunityproject.org. So they make um, tiny houses, like tiny house communities for veterans who are homeless. They try to help veterans um, who are homeless to get back on their feet, to find jobs, to get job placements. It's this really, really cool organization that started in Kansas City um, and is now branched out to St. Louis, Colorado, maybe a couple other places. Um, and they're building these small, tiny home communities that are like transitional housing to get veterans jobs and then get them into into like apartments or homes or whatever. But they have um, like these tiny homes. They're not homeless while they're doing all of that. So our plan is to um, sing all these patriotic songs. Fun, great, totally fits in with the curriculum. Have songs about veterans or songs about the United States. We're doing the 50 Nifty United States. We're doing America the Beautiful. And we're uh, doing it verse in sign language. And we're doing um, a couple other fun little songs that like fit in and match in and, and work pretty well. And then we're also going to have a food drive um, where all the food will go to Veterans Community Project VCP. Um, we're also going to have an option for parents or community members to donate directly to VCP. So the cool thing about it is like it honors our community and veterans in our community because we're also going to have kids bring in like, is your grandparent a veteran? Is your parent a veteran? Is another grown up in your life a veteran who you want to bring in an honor? And we'll put pages like that up and, and scroll that through so parents can see. Um, so it's going to honor our community. It's also going to honor our broader community of Kansas City um, by helping to... Um, further this great organization, organization VCP. And that all, like, you can do so much. So we've got a community service aspect. We've got an honor our own community aspect. We've got all these great songs that, like, are worthwhile for kids to learn. Um, we'll have a little bit of, we'll, I'm making a script to sort of tie things together. Um, and so it's going to be not just veterans, not just patriotic, but also, like, our community. And that's just something that, like, I'm just pulling that all together and like, ooh, yes, that song will work. Great. Ooh. And like, I have a friend who works at VCP. So I was like, ooh, 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 read. Can we do something? Can we write letters to veterans too? Like, what else can we do? You know, trying to find those connections and make them work. So that's a sort of a programming thing. Um, somebody asked about echo on recording. I have no idea yet, Abby. Um, I hope that the recording sounds great. I don't know. Um, it, th that's something that they, the district is like working on. So it's like less my issue, 
hopefully and more there's because they like are intentionally trying to make sure that we're doing more streaming and stuff and so they want to help us out with that so luckily i'm in a <laughs> district liaison to try and help with that um but my thought and and you're absolutely right is to try and how do you cut down the echo but my thought ultimately is like i just want to share it with our community so if it doesn't sound great we're going to do the best sound we can and then go for it but there are so many elements i can't control i can't do kids in my classroom i can't do kids outside it has to be in the gym like there's just that's the only safe best way to do it so we're gonna just try and make it work okay i see i, I think there are a couple more questions i'm going to try and get back to it but um one more thing i want to share like when i'm teaching the songs like especially fourth and fifth grade where there might be songs with more verses um where i want them to get the the words more quickly um probably many of you have heard when you're teaching something to do like whole part whole and that's like what i do for most of my songs i put up a lyric slide on the on the projector um so like what's a great example so we did we're doing a song right now called hats off to america so the first um the first verse you know i put up the whole thing i sing through the whole thing and let them listen right and then i do line by line and I have them echo after me and then we put all that back together and they sing the whole page all the way through and then i just sort of gradually release and gradually pull out now i am a pianist i'm comfortable with that i like sitting at the piano so like when i'm doing echo singing like i'll sing it and then i'll play the melody line as they echo you know like i'm happy and comfortable doing that and for me that works i know that doesn't work for all people but for me that works but as as we go like you know the first time through when they're singing by themselves i'm super heavy on the melody and just a little bit of accompaniment and then maybe i'll add a little bit more accompaniment and then maybe i'll pull out the melody a little bit it's just that gradual release of like give them more and give them a little more and give them a little more if i didn't play piano um i would probably i mean if i were using a track i would maybe use it but probably not right away at the beginning because i want them to be really strong and foundational on their part before i introduce the track so i don't usually add the track until i feel like they know the words and they're good with it even though it might be a little awkward i'd rather them sing either with a piano or acapella first so they're strong on that before because sometimes the track they get lost in it and it's just lots and lots of sounds so again that's why i try and just do the melody and stuff of just their part first um when i'm teaching a song i usually do like a chunk first verse and then maybe the bridge and then the chorus and then we do all of that together and then maybe in that same day i'll get to another verse or maybe i'll just wait till the next day and do the next verse you know i try and just chunk it out instead of zooming through because I, again i want them to like really know this part before i move on really know this part before i move on really know this part before i move on and then put it all together and then usually by the end of like our first like performance is like i'll play piano and they'll sing right it's it's not usually like actions and track and whatever first it's usually like a super simplified version but we got all the way through with the music because we know we can sing and know the music and then it's like then i'll add more accompaniment or then i'll add a backing track and usually it's like we learn the words and sing it then i'll add actions um and then we'll try it with a track um and then usually eventually i'll be like oh no the clicker isn't working oh no what are we gonna do i i hope you know the words by now let's see and i'll play and then just see if they could do it memorized so it's like slowly pulling out the supports just scaffolding them into it so that they're real successful but it's like gradual 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 give them more give them more give them more give them more let them do more on their own until by the time we're done they they've got it all themselves and and i'll do that like with a song and then the next time i see them we'll run through it before we do a new song so they keep it fresh in their memory so they remember it they understand um but again it's like this thing first this thing first this thing first tiny 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 and i think principals when they come in and see that they're always like oh wow you music teachers you can scaffold so well it's like well no it's like the only way they're gonna learn <laughs> like like you've got you've got to so um it's just it's something that we do slowly over time i've also learned that like some kids you 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 gotta give them more time with that because reading is tricky um not not just for kids who are like having difficulty reading but like all kids if we rush them through too quickly and we're giving them the chance to read we're if you ask them to read and sing right away it's sort of tricky because you're asking them to read in time as opposed to like reading it slowly as they would normally in their class you're you're asking them to do like 
like in their classroom, like they would go through a sentence slow. Kids who are learning will go through a sentence slowly and get each word. For some kids, it's it's fluency, but for other kids, it's like they're they're piecing things together. So ask them the first time through to do it quickly. It's like it's like too much for some kids. If that makes any sense, talk to your reading teacher. It's it. I have so many fun conversations with my reading teacher about like we're reading and we're singing, and she's like that must be tricky because in right away they're like constrained by time they're not allowed to sound things out because they can't slow down so it's it's really interesting like how many when i realize that like they're not getting it it's like oh i gotta slow down the tempo because they're getting there are tricky words like vine alabaster cities gleam okay that is not in the fourth grade curriculum. <laughs> you know like i gotta slow it down i gotta like stop and explain i gotta make sure i hit that word so they know they're really comfortable with that um okay if you have any other questions pop those in now we have just a couple more minutes um, but, but yeah, it's like concert prep is this slow, arduous, terrible thing that hopefully you end up with like a beautiful flower at the end. But I will be honest. I, I hate performances. I hate doing them because it's just so much work. It's so much work and it's stressful. And like, I know that like in the end, it's like, oh, you have this fun thing that kids will remember. But like also by the end, usually on the day of the concert, I am sick because it's like so much mental and physical stress and it takes so much. And like, I'm like a computer with like a thousand tabs open by the time we get to the concert like I can finally clear them all out but like it's just so many things for me that like I honestly don't like concerts I don't like doing that and so it stresses me out but like thinking out like if if we're getting ready for a concert and I can have all my songs planned out and think about like well the big one is this one so I got to do it first or like here's the really fun one so or here's a really fun one so I'm going to do it sort of towards the beginning of my concert prep so like they're into it they're excited about it and then like thinking about the pacing out of things that really helps me out so that like I'm not stressed out about things all the way towards the end if I can get my song list ready if I can sort of start thinking about like what am I going to do for cons costumes or you know I just got to be like one or two steps ahead it works. If you're in your first or second year of teaching, I'm really sorry. Because those years were, I had the worst concerts because I just didn't know what I didn't know and it just took long. And so anyway, give yourself a little grace. If you're 20 years in and you still feel stressed out about concerts, I'm 11 years in, I still feel stressed about concerts. Um, give yourself a little grace. <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay. Uh, Danielle says, you'll sing a line, have missing words. Um, Students have to sing the missing word. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that like make it a game. Yeah. So like, uh, I, I do that too. I did that just the other day uh, where like I took the words away. Um, like, you know, America, America, uh, America the beautiful. Oh, beautiful for. You know, like I'll sing and have them fill and that's fun. You're absolutely right. I forgot about that. Um, Amber, I love the students get a chance to shine during a program, but I agree. It is so stressful. Yes, it is <laughs> stressful and that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, cool. I think we've gotten some questions. I feel like more questions are going to come in. If you're listening to this as a podcast or if you're listening to this later, uh, please come back and add comments either to YouTube or send me a message or whatever. I'd love to hear some of your concepts about concerts. I just sort of gave, I didn't give like, oh, David's grand video about how he does all of his concerts i did not do that tonight but i gave you some of the ideas of like how you might pull things together some ideas about how you might do that and then some of the pacing stuff but i would love to do more about concerts um, and talk more about that in depth or, or answer more questions or just not really even answer questions because like obviously i am not the the final knowledge on it but like i'd love to like just have another conversation about that so <laughs> Please do more concerts and more ideas and more thoughts. Uh, send me those as a message. Leave comments on the, the thread as you're watching or as you're uh, listening. I'd love to, to do more of that. Uh, next week, uh, we're back again with more kindergarten through fifth grade lessons. We'll do uh, more in depth on a grade level next week and not just on an idea like concerts. But um, I hope you'll come and join us again next week. If you're in the Kansas City area, I hope that I'll see you this Saturday with the Heart of America ORF chapter for um, a workshop in Belton. And I hope that um, I'll see you there. All right, everyone. Have a great night. I'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Bye, Instagram. Great to see you tonight.